I had a plan for shooting a video at the Pomona Reptile Show last weekend. It was a good plan and it was going very well until Saturday night when things went off the rails. I had a problem and a completely different mission for Sunday at the show. Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. We're about to cut to the Pomona Show last weekend. I was going there to look around and shoot a video. I wasn't gonna buy anything except for a load of frozen rodents from Lane Labs. But the plan for the video was that I wanted to figure out if I could find a new favorite snake species, not to buy, but just have a, a favorite uh, that's not a, a species that I already keep and not a species that I'm already super familiar with. So to do that, I wanted to interview people and find out what their favorite top two snake species are for them to keep. So enjoy that portion of the video. Spoiler alert, I do something really stupid and that video is gonna take a left turn. I can't believe how stupid you are. You don't even know what I did, Kent. You weren't there last weekend. I wasn't talking about last weekend. I was just making a statement. Kent won't go to a reptile show because he's very scared of everything in there. But don't worry, we'll have a Kent's Corner in the middle of this video. Let's just cut to Saturday when everything was going well. Ed and Emily, it's so good to see you here. Uh, you guys, tell me what your top two favorite snake species are. Like, of all time or here at the show? Of, no, of all time, for you as a pet, top two uh, favorite pet species. Plains hognose snake. Okay. And I think I like them a lot because of all the cool adaptations they have between their enlarged rear fang, fangs and their defense mechanism of plain dead. Yep. And the color morphs, like we just produce lavenders this year. Plains hognose. Okay. And False water cobra, Hydrogynastes gigas. Okay. Because they're big, they're beefy, they have a really cool scale pattern and like build up, like the huge scales on their head. You're and going so in depth, and I'm just gonna say green tree and oh. Madagascar hognose. Oh, but, I, but I was gonna ask why also, because oh, Emily's totally doing it right. Oh, perfect. good, see? That's why she's in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah. I love false water cobras though, and they hook yeah. up. So, your two? Uh, green tree, just because they. They're always like a centerpiece animal. Um, they always, it's like that green snake that everybody's just like, what is that? They started asking questions, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the, the Madagascar hognoses, I mean, we bred them this year, so they have a little that special helps. place in my heart. <laughs> and they're just awesome, just a giant hognose, you know, so. That's fair. I would have to just say ball pythons. I know that's bland and, you know, in the middle of the road, but that's what I can uh, that's what I can handle because I have some issues with you know my health and my shoulders and stuff, mm -hmm. picking up snakes. So that's about the size I can handle. But then I also like what are those small retics called? The dwarf the, the retics, dwarf, like you dwarfs. guys. You uh -huh, got a dwarf retic. Yeah. yeah. So I like those. I, I'd probably be able to handle something like that because they don't get too big and that's too right. heavy. So probably those two species. I really like red tail boas a lot. They're super big, so we can't own any right now, but I love them. I think they're so pretty. And my first snake was a corn snake, so that holds a special place in my heart. You might have a harder time answering this question than anybody else here. If you could only keep two species oh, no. of snake, for you personally, yeah. as a pet, what would your two species be? I probably already have them. Sure. Uh, Pataius carinata is my one of my absolute favorites. I don't know. I I have so many cool snakes that they like they are my favorites. I, I yeah, you're I know right. It. It's, I told it. It's you hard can't to answer. answer. No, I can't. No. All right, give me your top five, real quick. Round them off. Oh my gosh, my diversions, my Philippine, my blue Philippine mangrove snakes. Uh, that's one of my top favorites. Uh, Boiga synodon. I'm a Boiga guy. Matthias Carinata. Ooh. I, I, I don't know. Man. Got Adler from Serpent Eclipse who just fixed my camera. We wouldn't be watching a video right now if you hadn't fixed my camera. My first one would be a Super Dwarf Retic, and that's because of the size that I get them in. I love reticulated pythons, and instead of 20 feet, I get them under 10 feet. And then my second one would be a Bullens Python. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're another larger species. Um, they're not common in the industry, and they're extremely smart.
Ball python, indigo snake. Give me, a, give me a quick reason why on both. Ball python, because I have kids and I like putting a snake into other kids' hands, even that aren't my kids. And that's the best snake to do it with. They're just so docile and easy to hold and not try to squirm all over the place. And that kid will be able to love that snake without having to know anything about how to properly handle the snake, basically. Totally agree with that. Uh, and then the beautiful color palette that you have to choose from. And then for the other, uh, the indigo, indigo snake. Indigo right? snake, yeah. Indigo snakes, um, particularly the eastern indigo, is is what I really like color wise. But just their personality and their, the the uh, awareness and the seeming intelligence of of this snake is just the interaction, the human interaction between with the snake is just next level compared to any other snake I've had. So, thanks, Brian. Yep. I figured that. And and why, also? I don't know, I just love them. They've just kind of been my snakes since I kind of got one the first time, which that's my first one in that cage. When I was that's through. your first one? That's my first one. I've had her almost 14 years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She's and not as long as I thought she would be. No, they grow really slow. So once they hit about a certain size, they kind of slow down, they'll just get girthy, and like the length will slow down. So they just get basically fatter. Yeah. All right, so green anaconda, because you love them. Yeah. What, what would your second one be? Bowens. I've never actually owned one myself, but I just think they're super cool. Johnny, congrats on this new clothing line, man. Tell Thank me you. about Appreciate it. When, when did you start this? So the idea came about, uh, well, I actually wanted to do this about 10 years ago, but we actually started really working on things about two years ago and started going through designs, rehashing, going back and forth until we found something we really liked and then we decided to break out this year. Where can people go to find your stuff? So we're reptilecrew.com. Um, you can also go on Instagram, Facebook. We're also doing TikTok and YouTube and we're going to be doing some really awesome videos and we're actually going to be dropping a lot more really Really cool merch. All right, John, uh, I've, I've bought several beautiful snakes from you, one of which just laid a clutch recently. Right. We, we got a clutch hatching from a hatchling that I bought from you. What if somebody said, John, you can only have two pet snakes for you? Two, if I can only have it was two just, pet. It's just you. You have big snakes, you have all kinds of stuff. What would be the two that you personally would keep? I mean, money's not an object. No, money's not an object. I mean, Bolins, Pythons, and Amazon Basin Emeralds. Those are two of my favorites these days. I really enjoy them. Those are my top two also. You just you just named my top two. <laughs> See that? <laughs> I knew we had a lot in common. I'm holding my top two dream animals right now. I've got a baby Bolins. How old is this Bolins? That Bolins is going on 10 months old. So this is... John from John's Jungle. This Bullens is 10 months old, and this is about a year and a half Amazon Basin tree boa. I'm so excited about this right now. If anybody wants to buy me either of these snakes, John accepts checks and cash in the mail. Before we get to the craziness that happened on Saturday night, let's see what Kent came up with for Kent's Corner. Hi, welcome to This Is Kent's Corner. It's time for you to watch this show, and here I am. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about how stupid my brother is. I don't know what he's done this time, but he is super dumb. One time, when we were kids, he ate so many vanilla wafers that he threw up all over the place and almost ruined our camping trip. And then, when we were in high school, he joined choir to impress a girl, and then he had to sing in front of the whole school all year long, and he sucks at singing. Also, guess how many parking tickets he has? If you guessed a lot, you nailed it. <laughs> what a complete turd. Thank you for watching Ken's Corner. Oh, no offense, and all due respect. I said no offense. Kent, I... You know what, never mind. We're gonna forget about that because I have good news. I have snakes hatching this morning. Here's one of them. More on these little guys in another video. My waiting list for that particular clutch just opened up with the Horde of Keepers over on Patreon this morning. I get emails from people occasionally asking how they can purchase a snake from me. At any level on Patreon, you get to get on a waiting list whenever I have a clutch hatching, and uh, you've got the opportunity to get a snake. There are also a ton of other perks over on Patreon, but since I've got a clutch hatching right now, I thought I would highlight that particular one. 
Anyway, these are a complete list of the Horde of Keepers over on Patreon, and I really appreciate them because they're helping to keep this channel going. And thanks so much to this particular fantastic cage builder for their support of the channel. All right, here we go. I left the show around 3 p.m. so I could drive back to Burbank and load up my freezer full of rodents that I purchased from Jesus at the Lane Labs booth. Then I got back in my car, drove back to Pomona to attend the US ARC auction that evening. I was just going as moral support for people who might be buying something. It's fun to egg people on to try to get the bids up. About midway through the live auction, there's a snake up for bid. But I'm not really paying attention because I'm just trying to be a guy with a cool hat and a glass of whiskey. I'm just a vibe over by the wall. But as the bids are rolling in, there's a pause in the bidding. Now, I've been the auctioneer at many events, and I know from that position that you do not want the bids to slow down. You want to keep that energy up. So. In an effort to help out Phil Goss, who was doing a fantastic job, I threw my hand up, just in an effort to keep the bids rolling in. But the bids didn't keep rolling in. That was it. Oh my God, you guys, I just accidentally bought a boa constrictor. It was not my intention to buy a boa constrictor, but now, I mean, I'm taking it home tonight, but tomorrow I'm bringing it back to the show. And now I have to sell a boa constrictor. I don't need a random snake. And it occurred to me later on that night that trying to sell the snake is probably not the best idea. What am I gonna do, walk around the show with a sign on my back? But trying to trade the snake maybe for something that I do work with could be a better option. So let's go try to trade a boa constrictor. My first stop to try to trade this boa is the reptile shop. The problem is Mike Roscoe is all over the place and he's gonna be impossible to find and he's the guy that I got to talk to so I'm gonna see if I can find a snake that I might want to trade and then I gotta find Mike Garrett you saw what I did last night yes I, I bought a boa constrictor that was entertaining I, I don't I don't work with boas but it's for charity it is for charity yeah so uh, I'm trying to trade this thing for something that I do work with and you had a video that was fantastic where you traded up what did you start with a roly-poly that I caught in the backyard that's right and I got up to an $8,500 pair of ball pythons by the end of the day. Dude, that is so, incredible. No pressure. No pressure. No, I'm not going to outdo that, but I do need your advice. Okay. What's your best advice on how to go about this? All right, so the, so here's what I did with the bug thing. I started with bugs with my bug, and I traded up to the most expensive bug. But that's not very expensive. So I had to jump to something more expensive, which in that case was geckos. So I jumped across to an expensive gecko, rode that up, then I jumped across to a python. So the thing is, if you switch from one market or type of animal to another, you have different classes of what is expensive and value. Right. But also you'll get more reluctant trades. Like a ball python guy who needs the ball python that you have for his ball python is happy to trade. Right. But they might not want a crested gecko because they just don't do crested geckos, no matter how cool that crested gecko is. So sometimes when you jump from one species to the next, like if you want to get rid of a boa and get something else, you might have to find like a reptile specialty shop. Yes. Good luck for you. There's a bunch of them around here. There is. My wow. situation's a little bit different because you were going from a isopod. Yes. I'm going from a $2,200. Oh yeah, you're already like halfway there. I'm not even trying to trade up. I'm just trying to trade across. Well, why not so. trade up? It makes a better video, right? Comment below if you think it would be better if you walked away with like a half a million dollar animal. Right? Thanks, Garrett. So here's my main problem right now. Yesterday I walked through the show filming people, saying hi to people, stuff like that with no intention of buying anything. So I wasn't really looking at what I might want. And now I have a snake to trade and I'm trying to find something that I want to trade that I want more than this snake. So, and I really do like this boa. It's very cool um, and I got a deal on it. I just don't work with boas. So we'll see if I can find a python that I want. So I just talked to Mike Roscoe at uh, the reptile shop and he's interested in the trade. He likes the snake and he says if I find something on the table that I want to trade him for, to let him know. I don't know that he has anything today here that I need at this point though. I'm going to take another look around. Um, we'll see. He usually has blackheaded pythons and I could use a male blackhead, um, but he doesn't have any right now. So we'll see what happens. Here's what I'm realizing with this trade is 
This is very different than what Garrett did because he started off with a little tiny thing to trade and went incrementally up from there and he got to go back and forth and have fun with it. Whereas I'm starting with a very niche animal. Uh, the Central American boa is different than the, you know, the dwarf boas are different than, than the normal ones. So even if I go to a boa specialist, they may not work with Central Americans. Uh, so I may keep this. Here's the thing. I've got, there's a couple people that are willing to potentially make a trade, but they don't have anything on their table that I'm necessarily interested in right now. And I don't want to get a snake just to get a snake because I'm already in that situation. Like I have this boa to have a boa and just trading for some random snake. You know, I like the boa, it's cool. So I may keep it, I might sell it. The snake might be for sale. Like as you're watching this video, I don't know. Um, but I'm thinking I might, I might just keep it. So Handsome Dan came home with me for the time being, I guess. That's his name, by the way, Handsome Dan. He's, it's his shortened name. He's got a longer, more epic name. Pomona Dan, Lord of Responsible Spending and Scourge of Auctions. But we'll just call him Handsome Dan. In truth, if I was ever going to make an accidental purchase, I'm happy that the money goes to US Arc. And I would encourage anyone else to open their wallets at a US Arc auction, become a member of US Arc, donate to them. Don't uncheck the box when you ship a reptile that says, make a $1 donation to US Arc. Keep that box checked because this is the organization that fights for your right to keep reptiles in the United States. Oh, let's wrap up the main reason for this video. What's my new favorite snake species? A boa constrictor. Handsome Dan is a Central American T-positive albino fire. He's also 66% het for annery. I like him, but if there's any boa people out there that are possibly looking to make a diamond, that's the super fire, which is an all white boa constrictor, they look awesome, send me a message and I might be willing to sell. The thing is, he's cool and he's a dwarf locality, which is great, so I would be happy to keep him. But I do have limited space and I'm usually really careful about the purchases I make. I don't just buy random snakes. Impulse buys are not a thing that I'm a fan of. I always have a good strategy for buying my snakes. You want to see some of that strategy? Check out this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.